Hi everyone, thanks for being with me. <clears throat> on many of my comments, or occasional comments I have on my YouTube channel, one of them is, uh, why do Australians care about US politics? And it's an interesting question, one which I'm going to explain to you in just a moment. <music> So the question often has been raised because I'm fascinated with you know, the politics in the United States. It's a um, reality TV show like no other. It's a blockbuster, it's a winner, and it's a high-rating event. And most of us are interested in it primarily because we wonder whether we are similar in some ways to the United States. <clears throat> well, we are because we tend to adopt any of the latest uh, social... Um, media um, interests, I guess, that come by the United States. Um, we are culturally very similar. We accept a lot of the cultures also that, are, that emanate from the US. So in many ways, and we speak a kind of English that is similar, very similar, not the same as, but similar to that of the US. So we are interested. We have connections with the US in many, many other ways, <clears throat> particularly through AUKUS, which is our defence mechanism, I guess, to help us to be safe, as a, so, well, so they think, uh, in the Pacific, and uh, we are helping the US to ensure that we are the primary base for them in this particular region. So we have lots of connections with the US. We are interested in what happens over there. But I think, more importantly, we think you're funny. I was going to say we think you're a joke, um, and I guess to some extent by some of us that is true because many of us don't understand your system of, of government. We don't understand uh, the Electoral College, for example, and how that works and why in the hell you'd even think that was democratic. And, of course, we laugh at you every time you say you're the greatest country on earth because that is just blatantly untrue. Um, so <clears throat> we find you amusing. I guess that's the issue here. But there are some people in Australia who take you extremely seriously. So there is a right-wing aspect of uh, our community, uh, particularly through Sky News, which is equivalent to Fox News in the US, for those of you from the US who are watching. And uh, they think you're great. In fact, uh, they, they think Trump is the greatest, greatest president of all time, and that Trump himself will be an asset to the United States when he's re-elected in November. And so they push that notion continually. <coughs> and I push back against it because I think it's just untrue. But I'm going to show you a clip um, of uh, them making on Sky News talking about uh, the US presidency. And then I'm going to show you a survey which talks about how we Australians view Harris and Trump and who we would vote for uh, if we were involved in the US election. It's an interesting analysis, so I'll show that to you in a second. In the meantime, let's have a look at this. Sticking with the US and Trump has blasted Kamala Harris's speech at the Democratic National Convention earlier this week. Well, of course he has, but where she promises to make changes to the immigration system, pledges support for Ukraine and has vowed to lift the middle class, Trump called into Fox News to slam Harris. All of these things that she talked about, we're going to do this, we're going to do that, we're going to do everything. But she didn't do any of it. She could have done it three and a half years ago. She could do it tonight. She didn't talk about China. She didn't talk about fracking. She didn't talk about crime. Look, she's a Marxist. She always was. She always will be. And I just need to say that, interestingly enough, in this interview, they got so bored with Trump because what he does is he... He rings around to all the news media, Newsmax, Fox and so on, uh, in order to get some sort of coverage when he's hot under the collar because he, he isn't heard anywhere else. Um, and they got so bored with him, they had to cut him off. And also, it's worth noting that with many of his rambling um, speeches, uh, which are simply um, <coughs> incoherent, then in those cases, they also cut him off. So they've had enough of him. 
basically, and he's not up to his usual disgusting standard, but uh, the media has said enough is enough. However, here in Australia, these particular people don't quite see it the same way. I, do, I mean, I have to say, I always find it laughable when Kamala Harris promises to make all these improvements. You've been in the White House the last four years. What have you been doing in that time? going to crack down on illegal immigration. Oh, well, exactly. <laughs> She'd have to go to the border yeah. first to be able to do that. Remember, she didn't even go to the border. Get her a compass. It, Natalia, <laughs> do you agree with Trump? And this, this is where they sell that misinformation, which was, you know, this notion that she was the... Um, the border czar and so forth, uh, which she wasn't. Her, her job was simply to go to uh, the countries like Venezuela, Mexico and other South American countries to talk to them about what they could do to encourage people to stay. So where crime was way out of control and gangs were governing the community, then what is it the US government could do? And I think as a result of that, they... They sent millions and millions of dollars and resources to some of these countries in order to cut back the flow of people from those countries to the US border. And there are examples, I believe, as, as to where that has happened, where people have begun to feel safer. People don't want to leave their country. They leave because they feel unsafe. That's basically what it amounts to. So she, and she was sent not to the border, to other places... Uh, beyond the border, in fact, in order to make, uh, to help the governments of those countries to make decisions that would encourage their, their citizens to stay, in other words, to feel safe. But that message doesn't seem to have got across to these dudes somehow. What he was saying. Oh, absolutely, and exactly right. She can she could go back and fix that, but she's trying to ride on this honeymoon stage of her replacing Biden and people finally happy somebody is not demented. <laughs> well, look, that is a big, big plot. No, no, they, they have Trump. They have Trump who's demented. So, you know, got rid of one guy, still got the other. I spray, you have to say. <laughs> I mean, she doesn't appear to be suffering from perhaps the cognitive decline, but when that is on your, the, one of the major things on your side, it's a pretty low bar. Yeah, it, the bar is very low for the Democrats at the moment. I mean, yeah, it's, it's a campaign of vibes over substance. As Joe said, hasn't done a single interview, hasn't released a single policy page on her website. I mean, her social media is full of brat summer and all these TikTok <laughs> trends, which, you know, must be working with Gen Z, but in terms of her actual substantive policies, there's nothing. Mm. Well, you can see why she hasn't gone and done any mm. substantial interviews because she's not a great performer. No, but not, to be honest, I, th I think she's quite, she's quite sort of vacuous. She's a mm. sort of, she's, she's a sort of bunch of, this is where her infamous mm. word salads come in because she doesn't actually <laughs> know what she's talking about. Okay, so this, this, is what, this, is what this is what Australians are saying about her. So just to give you a, a sense that... Uh, not all Australians think that uh, Harris is going to be able to win this election. There are many here that are, are rooting for her, hoping like hell that, uh, that Trump wins because for reasons I do not understand, this seems to be the position that a lot of these right-wingers take. As opposed to some right-wingers within the Republican Party, or people within the Republican Party, I should say, who have decided that under no circumstances would they vote for Trump simply because he is just so wrong for the country. So in Australia, though, we're, you know, 12,000 kilometres away. We don't, uh, we don't have the same sense, clearly, particularly on the Murdoch Press, e.g. Sky News. But there was a survey done by the ABC, uh, which I think is worth noting. So here, um, the survey is called... If Australians could vote for either Kamar Harris or Donald Trump, the result would be a landslide, says survey. So um, the, the main issue here, if we had been asked, but if we, had, if we had been asked about us, Australians living in a middle power, aligned so closely to the United States and obsessively watching this show as if it were a Hollywood blockbuster, the answer would have been an unequivocal yes. So would we vote for Harris? Yes, we would. Harris's campaign headquarters is calling for a feminine at the polls this November using the hit song from Chapel Rowan in a meme that's flooded the internet 
and it looks like Australia, with no woman candidate in sight for PM, has joined the phenomenon in the US. We have been quietly having our own brat winter. Now, what it does show is that um, it's broken down the number of people that would vote for Biden and Harris. Uh, so in July, it was, as you can see here, it was a little bit different. Uh, but in August, the Biden-Harris shows that 48%, I guess that is, um, other three wouldn't vote 14, unsure. And those that would vote for Trump is only 27%. So out of the Australian population, uh, if we had a chance to vote, we would certainly be electing Kamala Harris. So what does this tell us? Well, maybe it tells us that Australians aren't as stupid as uh, they are in the United States. It also, you know, we need to be mindful that there are people that are like Donald Trump, and uh, we have, you know, a One Nations leader, Pauline Hanson. Uh, we have uh, another bloke by name of Senator Babbitt, Senator Antic, and a bloke by name of Senator Robertson. So there's these these clowns that do sit in our parliament who are um, conspiracy theorists, who have views that are so different from the general public, who are strange, um, ridiculous and would never, ever get the popular vote in order to win government so that they can do what Trump is simply doing in the United States. Would not happen here, and I think we need to celebrate that. So I'd be interested to know, if you're an Australian, which, who would you be voting for if you had the chance? Would you, would you vote for Harris, uh, or would you vote for Trump? And if you do say that you would vote for any either of these, just let me know the reasons why you would vote for them. I'd be, I'd be most interested to, to understand, uh, particularly I can understand why you'd vote for Harris, but I could never understand, not, not in my wildest dreams, why anybody would ever, who has a right mind, vote for someone like Donald Trump. It's just beyond me. So let me know what you think in the comment section below. In the meantime, take care, look after yourselves, and more importantly, be safe. <music>